welcome to the Craft House Magic Setter Tutorials. My name's Ellie and I'm going to show you today how to do the toe decreases and the kitchener stitch on a top down sock. This is part three of the top down sock setter tutorials and you can find the links to parts one and two in the down bar below. So you were supposed to knit to a one and a half inches short of the length of your full foot length measured from the back of your heel to the end of your toe and I am going to do a contrast toe as well that matches my heel in this colour so what I'm going to do is cut this yarn this is the main colour for the main body of the sock so it's long enough to sew the end in and I'm going to change to this coloured yarn so I'm going to engage my front needle as I normally would and pull a stitch through in the contrast yarn and it's a little bit fiddly to start with when you're changing yarn but if you just keep the tension um, so that it doesn't completely come apart and I just want you to knit one whole round so I've knitted halfway I'm going to turn the work and knit back to the beginning of the round. Don't forget to just tug a little bit just on the edge stitch so you don't end up with a ladder. Right there. I'm just coming to the end of the first round and I've got two ends hanging there so I'm just going to just do them in a little single knot and a bow and tuck them away just to keep the tension and to keep them out of the way until you then come back to sew your ends in and I'll undo that and sew the ends in. So now you're at the beginning of the round again this is the point where I find it most important to have a progress keeper at the beginning of the round because on every other round you're going to do decre decreases and it's nice to have a marker at the beginning of the round so that you can clearly see and feel as you're knitting round that you come back to that marker again. So this is the first of the decreased rounds and you knit the first stitch. Secondly, you knit two together. So I've just knitted one stitch and then knit two together and I knit to three stitches from the end of this needle. So I'm three stitches from the end of the needle and what I forgot to say when I started doing the decreases that it's a good idea to just make sure that you have equal stitches on the front and the back needle so that you don't end up with a wonky set of decreases. So now we're at the last three stitches of the first needle, you need to do an SSK. So we're slip, slip, put it back to the front needle and then knit through the back loop and then knit one. So that is basically what you're going to repeat on the other side, but I'll show you on the other side. So I'm going to engage the front needle. I'm going to knit one, knit two together and then knit to three stitches till the end of the needle. So we're three stitches from the end of the needle and I'm going to do an SSK. So I'm going to slip, slip, slip them back to the front needle, leave the needle in the back and knit through the back loop and then knit one. So that is a complete decrease round and I'm going to do one plain knit round and then one decrease round and I'm going to keep doing this until I have about 12 stitches on the front and 12 stitches on the back so a total of 24 stitches and I'll carry on with that and I'll come back to you in a minute when I've done lots of decrease rows. So I've repeated those two rows until I've got 12 stitches on the front needle and 12 stitches on the back needle and I've just finished off with a knit round. 
I then pushed my stitches to nearly at the end of the tips of the needle ready to kitchener them and I've cut my yarn about 15 inches so I've got plenty of yarn to sew the kitchener stitch at the end. This is my favourite type of tapestry needle. I like it because it's nice and small. It's a blunt needle so you don't stab yourself with it and it's got a relatively large eye but you may prefer to use a plastic needle with an even larger eye if you have trouble threading yarn through these type of needles. So I'm going to do the Kitchener stitch. Now many people do a setup row at the beginning, but I find that if you go straight into it, you get a nicer corner on your toe. So I have a bit of a rhythm when I'm doing this. I always think knitwise at the front and purlwise at the back. And that is always the first of the stitches that I do in this sort of rhythm of stitches. So I'm going to knitwise on the front and drop that stitch and then I'm going to purl wise next to it to sort of tether it in and then I'm going to purl wise on the back and drop that stitch and then knit wise on the back so as I said before I remember knit wise front purl wise back so I'm knitting first on the front dropping that stitch off, purlwise next to it and then purl on the back, drop that stitch off and knitwise next to it. So you're always doing the knitwise first on the front and dropping that stitch off and then doing the opposite on the next stitch and then doing the purlwise first on the back and then doing the opposite once you've dropped that first stitch off if that makes sense. And when you're doing these stitches you, like, you really need to give the stitches a little bit of a tug to get a lovely neat finish on the end there otherwise you'll end up with a horrible loopy end. So I shall show you how I do a few more of those stitches. Knitwise on the front, drop the stitch off, purlwise next to it. Make sure that you always have your yarn below the needles once you've put your needle through each of the stitches. So purlwise on the back, drop that stitch off and knitwise into the next stitch. Knitwise on the front, drop that stitch off, purlwise next to it, purlwise on the back, oops, drop that stitch off and knitwise next to it. And this is how it's looking. A nice neat edge so far. So I will carry on across the work and I'll show you what to do at the end. So now I'm on the last two stitches, knitwise at the front, drop the stitch off, purl in the front and the stitch next to it, purlwise on the back, drop that stitch off and knitwise next to it and you literally have two stitches left and I just do knitwise, drop the stitch off and purl wise drop the stitch off and I find that this gives a neater edge and you have this funny little bit at the end but we can fix that so what I like to do is go a couple of stitches down the work and poke my needle in there because we're going to tuck this little tuft away and I'm going to carefully put my hand inside the sock and pull that needle
So normally this comes in quite tight, but you do sometimes get the odd little loop. And what I will do is put my needle out of the work again, just making sure you've got through that loop and go back into the sock again, making sure you're completely inside. I'm grabbing the yarn through just to make sure you haven't got a little bit sticking out and you'll find that it's pretty neat once you've tucked that in and that's neat on both of the corners there you don't end up with these little ears that's sticking out so I'll pop my sock inside out and show you how I sew my ends in so I'm going to try and duplicate stitch here so I'll pop my needle And I'm trying to duplicate the knitted stitch, if that makes sense. I'll try and come a bit, a bit closer to the camera. So I've just wanted to show you how this works. <laughs> on a larger piece of knitting. So you can see how the stitches have worked up here. I've left them really loose so you can see them, but you're basically duplicating the stitches underneath. So I'm going to go up through here, into this loop next to it, and then following this loop here, I'm going to go back into this one, or into this loop and then back into the loop that you went through in the first place. Again I'm going to leave my yarn a little bit loose so that you can see where I'm going. I'm going to go into the next sort of stitch. I'm following it along here, going back into this loop that I did on the previous sewing, following it across here and then going through this loop and back through the loop that you went to start with. I'll just pull that a little bit loose so you can see what I'm doing. So you end up going up, down, up and down. There we go. So that is what you're doing on the sock. I just thought that this would be easy to see. But obviously if you're doing it to finish off you want to pull it a little bit tighter so that it's nice and snug in there but it's still nice and stretchy okay so now I've woven in this end I'm going to cut it um, relatively close to where I've woven it in you can of course leave cutting your ends off until after blocking um, but as long as you've woven in plenty of thread you're okay so I'll do the same with these ends here and these ends around the heel. Of course if you didn't do a contrast heel colour you won't have so many ends to sew in but I'll just show you how I sew this end in here. So I'll thread my needle. I sometimes find it easier to fold the yarn over and pinch it together to get it to go through the needle because it is quite a small eye. And then this is where I'd started off at the beginning of the round and I quite often you can see how the edge stitches of the top of the sock are quite clear but where the beginning of the round is it's not quite so sort of sturdy so I like to find where the first, first loop of the next part of the sock so I'm joining in the whole top of the sock together so that it's nice and um, sturdy so that's joined that in so it's nice and neat on the top there and then I just come through so I'm going to be sewing my end into the back of the work so don't forget this is going to be done on the inside of the sock 
I'm then going to take my needle and go into the right side of a few of the knit stitches. I'm going to do about five, I think. And then pull my yarn through. And don't pull it too tightly because you'll sort of spoil your tension. So it looks like this. Then you put your needle through the two legs of the knitting stitch and pull that through. Turn your work around and then go back up the same side or the same stitch but on the right side this time. Go in the, in the other direction. Take the right legs going that way. And there we are. If you pull that nice and carefully, don't pull it too tight again, that should give you a nice sewing and you can cut your end carefully without cutting your sock and that will hide nicely and be secure. So you've just got to sew in the rest of your ends and remove your progress keeper. And you have a finished sock. So feel free to ask questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, I hope you enjoy knitting socks as much as I do. So don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye! <laughs>